Join UF Hall of Famer and 14-year NFL vet Shane Matthews every weekday as he brings you all you need to know about your Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions with some of the biggest names in sports. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Or watch us live at 8 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Good morning and welcome to a Thursday edition of Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Hope everyone out there uh, is surviving. We have power. No, in Gainesville, hardly just a little bit of wind, hardly any rain. Uh, but down in south, the Naples, Fort Myers area was de devastating and headed through Orlando, now up the East Coast. And... Um, Rough storm, no question about it. We'll have Blake Brockermeyer for 24-7 Sports and our college football analyst Brent Beard join us in the second portion of today's program. Let's go ahead and head to Texas, and we're joined by Blake Brockermeyer, longtime offensive tackle for the Texas Longhorns and in the National Football League, now working for CBS and 24-7 Sports. Good morning, Blake. How are you, buddy? I'm great, man. How are you doing? Good. Uh, let's get your thoughts on um, – you know, you, you cover college football out there. Out, out, I call it out west. It's really not out west, but um, in the southwestern conference part of the country. Uh, before we jump into some stuff out there, especially the Big 12, I want to ask you, I know you follow the SEC too. Are there any surprise teams through four weeks that jumped out at you? I mean, I think there's a couple that, that, that stick out to me. I mean, Minnesota – uh, I thought would be decent this year, but they seem to, to, to be uh, a, a player in the Big Ten. Uh, Washington has really surprised me. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. Has, has done an incredible job there. They've, they've brought in a new coaching staff. They were really bad on offense last year, and they are uh, lighting it up this year. Uh, Florida State has been a big surprise to me. Uh, I didn't think that they would – be as good as they are, but they've they've really worked the, the transfer portal uh, system great and, and got some good players. Kansas, of course, has uh, been a, been a huge surprise, and then Syracuse. Uh, I didn't think Syracuse would 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 be as good as they are right now. So I think those those teams are the ones that kind of jump out to me, uh, just off the top of my head that that have really you know been impressive this year. I would have to agree with all those. Uh, I think Kansas is probably the most surprising. I, obviously, they have some tough games ahead, but Lance oh, Leopold's yeah. done a tremendous job. Anybody been really disappointing so far? I mean, I don't know about really disappointing. I mean, I think Notre Dame was, was overrated entering the season. Uh, they haven't been that great this year. I think they'll uh, they'll, they'll continue to struggle some. Uh Texas A&M, of course, losing at home to Appalachian State is, is was a was a wild deal. I think that they've got some 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 tough times coming ahead for them for the rest of the season. They've got some some tough games, uh, including this weekend in in Starkville, and then they play Alabama uh, the next weekend, which is going to be a interesting game after last year. And then uh, I had some expectations for Nebraska this year. I thought that they would. Uh, win seven or eight games. Uh, I, I think they've obviously been a major disappointment, losing the way that they've lost, and, and the defense looking the way that, that they've looked, and and then kind of just on a lower, uh, you know, uh, G five level. Uh, Houston's been a disappointment. I thought that they would be a team this year that would uh, possibly uh, be, you know, make a little bit of noise as a kind of a uh, a dark horse type team, but they, they haven't looked very good this year. Uh, Dan has a question. Dan lives out in Texas, by the way, on the Titan Mark, I mean, on the Facebook Live brought to you by Metal Law. He wanted to Blake your thoughts on OU and Texas coming to the SEC. And I want to kind of chime in on top of that when you give your thoughts. But, you know, we, we both know Texas lost last week. They played really well against Alabama. They lose in overtime to Texas Tech. Probably should not have lost that game. OU loses a game 
it seems like every year they shouldn't lose. Those are the type of games that they they could easily lose three or four of those type of games once they, once they get into this league, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, SEC, I mean, it, it will be interesting to see how they, how they, where they put them and what kind of quad or pod system. Uh, I mean, if they, if they were to put them in the, the East or West, then obviously if you're, if you're in the SEC West, you're, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a division of doom because you could lose every one of those games. Mm-hmm. Uh, the East is a little bit easier, even though I think this year they've improved. So uh, I think it's all going to depend on, on, on who they're playing and what their, their, their games are, you know, you know, every single year, but I mean, everyone's good. Everyone's big. Everyone's athletic and fast. I mean, you've, you've generally got, uh, you know, pretty much one, you know, one or two teams at max that, that you should win every game against in the SEC, but, uh, but they'll, they'll get better. I think both teams are trending upwards, even though that they, you know, had, had moments where they've struggled, but I think, the recruiting will, will will ramp up more with NIL. I think you know Texas has a huge advantage in that in that uh, realm, and so uh, I think I think the roster is starting to kind of uh, get a little bit more competitive. So I think it'll it, it might take a couple more years, but but I think they'll eventually get there, and they'll be, they'll they'll be in the mix and, and be competitive. And I'm not worried about them being you know either one of those teams being just a uh, a bottom feeder in the SEC. Uh, Andy on Facebook Live brought to you by Mellon Law says, Blake, what were your feelings on watching the Texas-Bama game with Suns on both teams? What was your take on that safety that was not called in the end zone? Yeah, it was definitely a, a game where I thought the the officials had some uh, interesting calls. Uh, you know, it's big Big 12 officials, so you can pretty much expect that every single time that you, that you see that they're going to be officiating the game. But uh, I was real impressed with with Texas's coaching. I thought they uh, did a great job of coaching, and uh, just you know, it's definitely a weird feeling uh, being in the stands and uh, you know, not really, <laughs> just kind of just hoping the game ends. You know, I didn't really have a whole lot of feelings either way. So, uh, but I, but I thought Texas obviously did it, did it did a great job. Should have probably won that game, but. Alabama is 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 built a little different way, and uh, they they prepare for those kind of moments. I think you know year round. And Bryce Young, if you give him the ball with with, with you know a little bit of time left, he's going to you know probably probably do some damage against you. And he, of course, delivered as usual. So I got to ask you now that Andy asked that question. I didn't think about this. So what did mom and dad wear to the game? Did y'all have? like a, a Texas hat on and a Bama polo. Did you sit in the Texas pl- players uh, section or the Alabama players section? I sat in the Texas players section. I wore like a little Texas dry fit uh, shirt and a, and a baseball cap. But uh, yeah, we were rooting for Texas. Luke's a senior. This is his last year. And uh, so we were, you know, sat in their seat. So we supported uh, supported the Longhorns, and uh, it was a it was definitely a, a, a weird day. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, look, before we jump into the SEC, I want to ask you about a big game this weekend uh, in the Big Twelve: Oklahoma State, who's still undefeated; Baylor, who's a really good team, has a loss at BYU in overtime. What do you What do you see happening in this game? Well, uh, Oklahoma State's coming off a bye, and so uh, I pretty sure last year when they played Texas, they came off a bye and they, they had some different wrinkles. They had a few different concepts and uh, offensively that, that were different. I remember watching, uh, watching them before they played and kind of looking for some different uh, things that they did in the game. And, and they did some, they did do some uh, different stuff. So they'll have some wrinkles. Uh, you know, Mike Gundy, of course, does as much with, with with the talent that he gets there as anybody in the country. They've they've scored a lot of points this year. To, to me, they ha- I'm not real impressed with who they played. I'm not I, Oklahoma State's this team every year that you 
kind of you kind of don't buy what they're what, what they're selling, but then they keep winning. So I I, I kind of like Baylor's body of work more. I think they match up well in the trenches, uh, and so I, I I think I think they'll find a way to win at home. And uh, but I think it'll be a close game. Uh, but uh, it's always a it's always a good game, and uh, it'll it'll be a uh, I'm expecting it to be you know one of the better games in the Big Twelve this weekend. Are you in the market to buy or sell your home? Darling, we be a realtor with Caldwell Banker M M Parish will provide you fast, friendly, reliable service. Call her today at three five two five six two fourteen eleven to help your dreams come true. Speaking with Blake Brockemeyer from Twenty Four Seven Sports, a uh, little college football. We we'll have Brent Beard a little bit later in the program. Um, I want to ask, so another huge game in the ACC is NC State undefeated going to Clemson. Now, Clemson was in a shootout last week. I absolutely love Sam Parkman from Wake Forest. Can NC State, Blake, in your mind, beat the Clemson Tigers? For sure they can, especially with uh, Hurricane Ian, or Ian, uh, uh, you know, the, the weather is going to be a huge factor in this game, uh, which – I'm not really sure who it favors, to be honest with you. Both teams have really good defenses. Uh, it'll, it'll be a defensive slug fest. Uh, I'm expecting, like I said, bad conditions with with wind and, and, and definitely rain. Uh, it'll be a field position, special teams, turnover battle. Uh, you know who will, you know who will make the big mistake with a fumble or a you know, drop snap on a punt or field goal or something like that. But I think, uh, you know, I think both teams are, are kind of in a, in a weird way, similar Clemson's got a little more, uh, offensive firepower, but it will not look like the Wake Forest Clemson game from last week. At least that's not what I'm expecting, but, uh, NC state's got a really good defense. Their linebackers are, are as good as any group in the country. I think, uh, and so they do a good job uh, in, in their defensive scheme. And Clemson, of course, is really good on defense, even though last week their DBs didn't look very good. But I, but I think it's going to be a great game. It'll be a, uh, it'll be an old like you know mid two you know 2010 SEC like LSU Alabama type game. Right. Yeah, two tremendous defense. Another game in the ACC, Wake, coming off their loss, travels to Tallahassee against undefeated FSU. Like, I know you do a lot of studies and you write articles on different players for 24-7 sports as well. Have you studied uh, Wake Forest's offense at all? You know, I studied them last year, and uh, it was real impressive. I mean, they've Sam Hartman, of course, is, is, a, is a stud, but they've got some really good receivers as well. That are tall and long that can that can go up and make plays. You know they run that kind of unique slow slow mesh. Well, that's what I that's what I wanted to ask you about because it's so intriguing to me because Sam Hartman like slowly rides that guy all the way up to about a yard and a half from the center, and then he'll pull it and throw an RPO. You know when when RPOs take that long, it's amazing that they never get linemen downfield. You know what I'm saying in the run game. So yeah, it's just it's just so unique. Yeah, their linemen aren't super physical, and and the way they're coached is to is to pretty much just kind of stay on the you know kind of move laterally, not really go down the field. It's kind of a zone uh, principle, but they do some different stuff off of that. Uh, they'll run some different looks. Uh, I would have to go back to my study last year and kind of uh, kind of refresh my memory on some of the different plays and stuff that they were running. But they they do mix it up more than you think. But uh, but but it is a unique thing that they do, and they've been doing that longer than Sam Hartman's been there. I, I can't right. remember the the quarterback that went to Georgia. Uh, that never played there, uh, but uh, he he did the same thing when he was there. So it's a unique system. It, 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 they've done a great job at Wake turning that program around. And the thing that impressed me most about Wake last week is their defense is is better than it's been. I mean, it's probably the best defense Wake Forest has had in a while. So uh, they won't be an easy out. But I'm a I'm a big big believer in, in Florida State all of a sudden. I really like what they're doing. They've got some players uh, and their quarterbacks playing well, so I, I expect Florida State to win that game. 
Yeah, I, I, it's going to be a good one for sure. Okay, I want to I want to ask your thoughts. Mississippi State let one get away at LSU a couple of weeks ago. They're hosting the Aggies. Yep. And and you being a Texas guy, I know you can't stand the Aggies. But man, why, they are boring as hell to watch. And they supp- suppose they have all this talent. Is it Jimbo's <laughs> fault that, or is he doesn't have a quarterback? What what's going on with him? Well, I think Jimbo's offensive. Uh, guru, <laughs> being an offensive guru, is is is, is obviously been exposed at, at Texas A and M. I mean, he had a he had a couple of years at <clears throat> Florida State where he uh, had some real, you know, like one one year in particular where he had a really good offense. But if you go back and look through his track record, he he's really like a top forty five kind of offensive guy, maybe top fifty. So. They don't have a great quarterback system there. They 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 haven't been explosive on offense. They do run the ball uh, well. D- Duvon A. Chain is a really electric runner. Uh, he's had some big games for them. Uh, they do that. They're opportunistic in the special teams area, uh, so they've been good there. But you know, Mississippi State runs a real gambling defense. They they'll they're not gap sound on every uh, one of their you know, blitzes and run blitzes that they do. So I do expect A&M to get them some in the run game. Uh, it's, it's Texas, believe it or not, this is a true road game of the entire season, which is unbelievable to me. Wow. So that, that'll, uh, that could come into, in, into be a factor, but Will Rogers has lightened it up. They beat him last year in college station, which is in my opinion, the hardest place in the country to, win a game at so uh i think texas a&m's defense is is, is pretty solid uh they'll give them they'll give them some they'll give them some problems but i like mississippi state to win this game and uh i think i think a&m if they don't win this game could be in for a a long year back to jumbo i mean now that you mention it has uh, uh, you know he was a coordinator for saving i think when they won the title at lsu but he never really had great offenses there. Is it? Is he only? Is he? Is it just the Jameis Winston years? Yeah, that, that he was yep. really good on offense. Yep, yep. He had, uh, or I think, early one of his first years at Texas A and M, uh, he had a, a, a decent offense. But it's it seems to be getting worse through the years. They don't. They don't. They're not explosive. That they've got, they've had explosive receivers. They've got a freshman, Evan Stewart, who's one of the most explosive receivers in the country. Uh, but uh, and they had a guy uh, that's not there anymore. That was that was similar to him. But they've just for somehow struggled get getting the ball, get, you know, getting the ball down the field a lot. Uh, they want to run the ball, play great defense. Uh, they love, uh, you know, you know, the defensive line. They've they've got, you know, it seems like most of their roster is defensive linemen. But uh, but they've got some good ones. They've got a lot of talent on defense, and uh, they're all they'll always be tough, you know, defensively. They just got to figure out their offense. I think he needs, to, you know, as soon, you know, after the season's over with, he needs to go out and hire a a, a real you know, offensive coordinator, let him do his head coaching duties and uh, maybe they can, you know, add some wrinkles to get the offense going down there. Yeah. I want to ask you one more question because OU Texas play in Dallas, Florida, Georgia, and Jacksonville, and A&M and Arkansas, I don't know how many years they've been playing there at Jerry's World, but they're going to continue doing that, correct? I I mean, as far as I know, yeah. I mean, I think it's a a great – yeah. Yeah, the reason I'm asking is because, I don't know, you living out in Texas – has there ever been any talk among when Stoops was the coach, now with Sarkeesian and Venables, whatever? Have they ever complained about playing that neutral site game that it that they lose a a weekend of a recruiting because that was the big stink that Kirby and Georgia says about yeah, the Florida yeah. Georgia game in Jacksonville. But now you got Arkansas and A and M playing on a neutral site. I've never heard their coaches complain about it. Is is Kirby the no, only guy no. complaining? Yeah, Kirby's the only one I've heard that that doesn't like that. I mean, obviously that's you know pub- publicly that's what they're saying. Privately, I have no idea what they think about it. But uh, but 
I, 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 there, there's no way they're taking the, the, the Texas OU game out of the Cotton Bowl anytime soon. I think that, that game's, uh, uh, going to be played there for a really long time. It's a incredible atmosphere. You've been to the game, so you kind of know how it is. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think that's there. I don't see that happening. I mean, it's that, that game's going to be played there as long as the Cotton Bowl is standing. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, last thing, uh, two questions before we get you out of here. I want to get your thoughts. Uh, there's a big game in Oxford this weekend. Ole Miss undefeated, Kentucky's undefeated. I don't know what to make of either one of these teams. When I when I see Kentucky like number seven in America, I just I I've seen them play in person. They're not the seventh best team in America, but maybe they are. I, I just don't think they're that good, especially on offense. How you see it playing out in Oxford? Yeah, this 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 is one of the better games of the weekend, I think. Uh, Kentucky's defense, the Stoops brothers do an incredible job defensively. Obviously, Will uh, Levis has uh, gotten a lot of hype. I'm not as high on him as a lot of people are, but uh, he's definitely a solid quarterback. They don't have a ton of explosive playmakers. I believe Rodriguez is is coming back to play in this game, which will which will help them. Uh, Ole Miss is kind of – they don't look the same as they did last year, but they're still a, a solid team. they got some, some really good running backs. So I think it will be a low-scoring game. Uh, I, I, I think somehow, some way, uh, Ole Miss pulls out this game, and really, a really close game, good game. To me, like I said, this is one of the better games of the weekend. Yeah. All right. So you do a, we'll, we'll let everybody know how they can follow your work, but you, you break down a lot of tape and do stories on certain players, break down how they play. Who's out of everything you've done so far leading up to today, who's been the most impressive player that you've broken down? Well, uh, this year I haven't done as many breakdowns as I have. I'm, I'm doing a, a, a North Carolina state defense. Uh, versus Clemson's offense that'll be out I think tomorrow but uh, I haven't done as many the 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 the, the main film study that I've done uh, for the most part this year is, is Florida State's got a middle linebacker named uh, Kalen Deloach who I really was impressed with uh, watching him play I honestly never even heard of this guy before uh, until I started watching the LSU game he kind of popped off on film and then they played Louisville on a Friday night game, and I was like, "Man, this guy is is an incredible athlete, uh, kind of a raw prospect." So uh, he he he's probably the the you know one of the few guys I've really studied uh, in particular during the season. But I'm going to start doing more of that, you know, starting this week with the NC. It's, it's, it's usually more of a breakdown on 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 matchups. But uh, but that kid really stood out to me, and I was impressed with his game and I think he's going to be a really good player at the next level. I had a Facebook Live guy, Daniel, just popped up and says, you love FSU. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I've been very impressed with them. Uh, I had low expectations for them going into the season, but uh, watching some of the players that, that they brought in and uh, you know, they're, you know, Jordan Travis has been impressive. I, I think that they are going to be a player in the ACC this year. Yeah. All right, Blake. Appreciate your time, my man. Let everybody know how they can follow you on Twitter and everywhere else. Yeah, B Brockermeyer Fort Worth is my Twitter handle. Uh, we do a, a show on on Monday and Wednesday uh, called The Block with Carl Reed on on twenty four seven Sports. So you can follow me on either one of those platforms and uh, 24-7 Sports will have articles, breakdowns, all kinds of different stuff. So podcasts on matchups and games and what's going on in college football. So usually a lot of content and, and, and it's always fun to, to keep, it, keep up nationally with what's going on. Good stuff, my man. Appreciate it. Tell, tell everybody in the family I said hello and we'll talk to you soon, bud. I will. You do the same, man. All right, that's Blake Brockermeyer joining us on the Titan Amara Hotline. We're going to take our time out. We'll come back. We'll be joined by Brent Beard, our college football analyst, who's hunkered down in his house. And uh, we'll get his thoughts on this weekend. You're watching and listening to Pot Up Matthews in the Morning. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are 
Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Meldon Law, the only official law firm partner of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Our Gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Celebration Point Town Center, Chris Doring Mortgage, Silverback Concrete Co., Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Doreen Weeby Realtor Caldwell Banker M.M. Parish. Our touchdown sponsors are Campus USA Credit Union, Adams Rib Company, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steaks, MB Listing, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Tropical Signs, Baker's Sporting Goods, Silver Cube Billiards and Sports Bar. If you are interested in promoting your business on the show, visit potupwithshane.com and click the advertise button. Again, thank you to all the great businesses that support the show. If you like what we are doing here, make sure you follow us and support the businesses that support us. Pro football legend Emmett Smith understands your joint pain. It does not surprise me that there are a ton of people out there that's in pain. That's why Emmett is such a proponent of QC Kinetics, offering real lasting joint pain relief with non-surgical, all-natural biologic treatments. Whether it's a joint pain, ankle pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, any kind of pain, the body eventually will break down when it's under that much stress. That stress can cloud your judgment to the point that you'll just say yes to the scalpel or yes to another prescription of pain pills. But maybe it's time for a second opinion from QC Kinetics. The reason why I would recommend this is because the natural biologics that QC Kinetics is providing you gives your body a chance to naturally heal itself. Restorative regenerative solutions are here. Get lasting relief and live your life. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. That's 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Chris Doring Mortgage, they do mortgage lending right, helping home buyers throughout Gainesville and North Central Florida. Call Chris Doring Mortgage today at 352-244-0840. I want to thank Blake Brockermeyer for joining us on the Titan Mar Hotline. We're now going to get back on the Titan Mar Hotline. And we're joined by our college football analyst, Brent Beard, who joins us every Thursday. Good morning, Brent. We didn't think we'd have power, but we do. Well, I'm quite thankful about that. I enjoyed Blake's segment. Uh, I was sitting here eating my scrambled eggs and oatmeal, <laughs> waiting on our segment. Uh, it is uh, the winds whipping around. We've got debris in the yard and so forth. But um, uh, Shane, I'm, <laughs> I thank God that uh, that, that we're okay uh, at this point, and certainly continue to. Uh, Pray for the folks in the Tampa, Orlando, and South Florida area that really were hit hard with this thing. Yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. It was, a, it was a bad one for sure, and it's going to take a while to get back to normalcy down there. Um, in the meantime, Brent, uh, the college football playoff committee has met again. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, they had a meeting this week. Uh, Bill Hancock, who is their spokesman, said that they are making some progress. They've got a big meeting coming up October the 20th in Dallas. That is the thought process that at that point they may have a starting time for the expanded playoff. Uh, Now, there are several things that that are going to be different about this. Uh, One is... Uh, the schedule is going to be moved up. As we've said before, the week uh, zero games are going to be the starting point for everyone for the season. Uh, so that, that that is coming. Uh, and um, now what's also going to be different, now think about this a minute, the uh, conference title games that are going to be uh, on uh, – uh, first weekend in December are likely going to be moved to Thanksgiving weekend. So, really? yes, think about oh, that a oh. minute. 
Yeah, I was I was yeah. confused for a minute. I thought you, I thought you were saying closer to Christmas. I'm like that is a long time no, away. No, yeah, no, my that, mind was that, not thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's okay. Uh, uh, but but think about that a minute, Shane. Instead of Florida, Florida State, Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, Georgia Tech on Thanksgiving weekend, it's going to be the SEC championship game and the other championship games that are going on now. The other interesting thing is. The commissioners have also discussed having some of the early playoff games, get this now, not on Saturday, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So uh, a lot of this is being discussed. Everything is on the table. We're not saying this is what's going to happen. But these are some of the things that are being discussed. A lot of this is trying to work around probably the NFL, uh, too. So uh, uh, the, the expanded playoff is going to change the schedule considerably. Yeah, the Wednesday, Wednesday games, I, I don't know how they can do that from a preparation standpoint. One team may have more days to prepare than the other. Sure. And then if you win that game, you know, you're going to have a, a a lot more time to rest and get ready for the next opponent. I, I don't know how they're going to do that. So they're a lot smarter than I am, I guess. Uh, Brent, before we jump into the conference, let's talk about some of the surprise teams around America. Sure. Blake and I kind of touched on the Kansas Jayhawks. What a story they are. Great story. Big game last week, beating Duke. Uh, I mean, when was the last time, Shane, we thought Duke and Kansas would meet and both be undefeated? Uh, Lance Leopold is a tremendous football coach. I, I'm curious if you know him or know much about him. I don't know uh, much. I just know he's won everywhere he's been. Uh, that's right. It was at Buffalo and Kansas. Shane, I can see him being. Um, I, I don't. Uh, I'm not being disparaging against Kansas, but uh, I, I could see him in a higher profile job. Is what I want to say about that. But they've got a really good quarterback. Uh, Jalen Daniels has done very well. Um, he is um, completing 80% of his passes so far. So, yes, Kansas is one of the uh, big stories of this college football season. Yes, they are. Let me ask you a question real quick. I'm going to put you on the spot. Jalen Daniels, he had to transfer in from somewhere, right? He did. Their quarterback? Yes, he's a junior from Lawndale, California uh, at this point, and uh, I will try to look that up to see where he transferred from. Good question. Yeah, the other team that's having a great year, and it uh, seems like they always start out real well and then hit yep. a skid are the Minnesota Golden Gophers, row the boat, all that nonsense. Uh, but they're playing good football. They are, uh, absolutely. Had a big win over Michigan State. 500 yards of offense, 27-point win. Their offense is converting 80% of their third downs, and their defense is getting stops on 86% of its third downs. So, boy, boy that's a combination, isn't it, Shane? If you, if you can control third down, you control the game, don't you? There's no question. Uh, we got a couple of Facebook Live here I want to get to before we keep moving on. Um, Andy asked, Brent, brought to you by Metal Law, are you into the analytics that Billy displayed on Saturday, or are you still, quote, old school on things like going for two? <laughs> well, look, uh, uh, I'm probably more the old school. Now, I'm fascinated by the analytics, and that's one of those things where for Florida fans, you need to trust your coach on that. Now, Shane can yep. explain going for two a lot more than I can, but – uh, the reality is, I know in, in, in coaches' minds, they that they are pretty stubborn about when they want to go for two, but they're used to that, and they and they get. And to me, the, the going for two thing is, if you can get it down to a one possession game, or is it still a two possession game? So, but 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 Shane, that that's my that's my answer to this. You, you've got the best coach you've had since Urban Meyer uh, in his heyday. Uh, and Billy Napier, and uh, it may not make a lot of sense, uh, but he has done the homework and the research, and he knows what he's doing. So, so just trust him 
uh, yeah. uh, for making those decisions. Yeah, you're going to have to. I mean, it's I don't I don't know enough about analytics, but it's all they prepare for, and it's what he's going to do. And Brent, right. uh, John asked here, and I can answer this. He said, "Can you explain why ESPN kept interrupting college football games to see if Aaron Judge hit a home run? Isn't he like 12 home runs behind the major league record? I don't get it. He tied it last night. Um, he did. Purist baseball purist." Going by, they go by Roger Maris's home run record, right? Because correct. what McGuire and Sosa and Barry Bonds did, people don't believe that's the actual home run record. So right. that's why right. they've been um, tuning in. If I'm correct, uh, that's correct, right, Brent? Yes, yes. Maris had 61, uh, and look, that's still quite a feat. I mean, a lot of guys don't get 61 hits. <laughs> much less 61 home runs in a year. Now, what they've done is, I, look, I, I get the consternation from football fans, but if you can split the screen like they did and you can still see the game, I think that's important uh, to be able to see that. So uh, it, it's certainly historic, but Shane's right. That in a lot of baseball fans' minds, uh, that Roger Maris mark is the mark. Yes, indeed. All right, let's talk about the Heisman Trophy a little bit. Uh, four weeks in, um, you got a list here of the top five Heisman Trophy candidates. <laughs> well, um, some of the usual guys, but yet we've added some. C.J. Stroud of Ohio State still playing well. We just mentioned Jalen Daniels of Kansas uh, in that he had 324 yards and ran for 83 Hendon Hooker is up there. Now, I want to ask Shane about Hendon in a minute, but Stenson Bennett certainly is from Georgia. Bryce Young certainly is. I think Brock Bowers, if he continues, is going to be on this list. But uh, Hendon Hooker had a tremendous game against Florida, uh, really up in his game in a a bit. Uh, uh, Dual threat a lot of ways. Uh, Shane, how impressed were you with Hooker? Man, I tell you, you know, because we were talking about his stats going in before we went up to the game, about he throw, thrown like 42 touchdowns and only two interceptions. Well, he's added like three more touchdowns to that. He he protects the football. He's a really good college football player. I don't see him playing on Sundays, but it doesn't matter. He's a perfect fit for Josh Heupel's offense. And if I was voting today, from what I've seen, and, and I don't get to watch as much football now because I have to travel and do the games – as I used to, but I think Hinton Hooker would be my best player in America right now. Well, uh, I, yeah, uh, he certainly would be up there. I, I I would agree with that. I mean, he what what he's done for them uh, is, is frankly amazing. That I mean, he is um, uh, he's accurate uh, and uh, he can get out of uh, bad plays and good plays. Yeah, I, I've been quite impressed. Uh, w- uh, with him all along. So, by, by the way, I-, I couldn't stand it, so I looked up Jalen Daniels. He came from Tennessee Tech uh, hmm. is where he was. Uh, let me get that straight uh, at, at that at that point. So, he's been around a little bit, but, um, uh, but, but, but again, you know, with this transfer thing, uh, without concentrating too much on this, you can go from a school – uh, when no one really knows you until you go to a Kansas and, and and basically turn the program around to some degree. So he didn't play a lot uh, at, at Tennessee Tech, but, boy, it sure has worked out for him uh, uh, at Kansas at this point. Yeah, some of the notable games this week, uh, Brent, that are uh, – I mean, there's there's a few games where they match up on beats. It's a, it's a tremendous schedule this week. Kentucky Ole Miss, NC State Clemson. Now, we've got a treat tomorrow night. A lot of people may may think, are you kidding? But Washington is at UCLA uh, for the Friday night game. Uh, now, Shane, there, uh, will there be 10,000 people there <laughs> in the Rose there'll be, Bowl? There'll be, there'll be 5,000 Washington Husky fans and about 2,000 Bruin fans Yes, is my guess. Yeah, it, it's embarrassing. It really is. But as far as teams playing Friday night, that, that that's going to be fun. And 
if I'm not mistaken, South Carolina plays tonight mm-hmm. uh, with with South Carolina State, and I that is on the network. I, I I've got to double check if that is the SEC network plus, or if that's just basically on the network. That'd be a real treat if it's on the network uh, still. So uh, we're playing at noon Sunday, so the Hurricanes change the South Carolina game that. That's worth mentioning. Uh, so you'll that there are some games tonight, and the South Carolina game will be one of them. Yes, for sure. Uh, let's jump into the SEC. Uh, start with Alabama. Um, what, what's going on up in Tuscaloosa? This is a big game for both of these teams. Alabama beat Vanderbilt. Looked very efficient in doing it. Bryce Young, uh, three eighty-five uh, passing yards. Jace McClellan is playing well. Bama's got a running back named Jamarian Miller, who is a bulldozer, comes in late and has done well. Jameer Gibbs has two. Ja'Cory Brooks had a good game. Now, uh, a couple of important things here uh, with this game. One is uh, Bama may have JoJo Earl back at wide receiver. They've got a kid named Anderson who's a freshman who may be uh, able to play. But the, but the one everybody's looking at, Shane, do you remember Ty, uh, Tyler Harrell from Louisville who averaged about 29 yards every time he caught the ball? Well, right. he's been he's been hurt, but he's supposed to play Saturday. And he is more of a speed guy, a track star, and Bama needs somebody to take the top off the defense. And that's what they're looking at. And before I talk about Arkansas, how about this, Shane, for a, for a stat? Alabama's defense is allowing only 3.33 yards per play. That's pretty yeah, that's sound, impressive. is it not? Yeah, it really is. In today's world, there's no question about that. You know, I, I remember in the summer people telling me that defensively this could be the best defense that Saban's ever had. And you and I think just people think back to what Sarkeesian and did, you know, in that game yes. until Quinn Ewers went down. So you don't think of them playing great defense, but they will be tested this week. Arkansas, they will, you know, with the big KJ Jefferson at quarterback. However, I think Bryce Young is going to have a field day. I think Arkansas secondary is so bad. Um, do you think Arkansas can make this a game? Yeah, I do. Um, uh, I think they've got enough personnel in order for that to happen. Now, Jefferson is uh, a behemoth at quarterback. Rocket Sanders has emerged as the, probably their better offensive player, um, one of the better running backs in the league, uh, Matt Landers and Jaden Hazelwood, uh, or, or good wide receivers. Hazelwood coming from Oklahoma. Now, to back up Shane's point, here's what's odd about the Arkansas defense. They are among the leaders in the nation in sack, quarterback sacks, but they are last in the SEC, one of the worst in the nation in pass defense. And the reason is they've had injuries to that secondary. Jalen Catlon is one of those guys. Catlon is going to play in the NFL one day if he ever gets healthy. So I, I think Bama wins the game, but I will not be at all surprised if there is a real effort from Arkansas and some desperation and urgency, that which means that they will play well. Yeah, yeah I can't wait to watch this game. And that's the good thing is I get to watch games this weekend since we that's play right. on Sunday. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, LSU-Auburn. If Auburn loses this game, you think, well, I thought Brian Harson was going to be fired last week. That he, he made it to another week. Does he get fired if LSU wins? Possibly. Uh, that's going around. Now, the Robbie Ashford's a quarterback. Uh, they're on thin ice at quarterback, so he's got to stay healthy. If he, if he gets hurt, they're either going to play a freshman or put Tank Bigsby in a shotgun, basically. Uh, they're wide receivers. Shane... Let me see if you've heard this. Auburn is one of three Division One teams without a touchdown running or receiving from its wide receivers. The other two are UAB and South Florida. Now, Auburn's lost another center, 
Tate Johnson is gone. So this will be the third center they've had uh, this year. And Shane can tell you how important it is to have a center that you're familiar with and you play with. Auburn, the Auburn voodoo, voodoo is on full display in the win over Missouri with the All-American kicker missing the field goal. That was an extra point. And then uh, basically the Missouri running back running for the end zone, uh, tries to shift the ball in his hands and loses it. So, uh, but again, this game has, has a strange history. Uh, the LSU quarterback, Jaden Daniels, is doing well. Noah Kane, the Penn State transfer running back, had a really good game last week. So, uh, yes, uh, the Brian Harson watch is uh, going on uh, as we speak. Um, I want to move down to the probably the biggest game in the in the conference is two undefeated teams, Kentucky and Ole Miss play in Oxford. Uh, should be a very, very interesting game. I don't know what to make of either one of these teams. Well, it, it, it's certainly one of the bigger games in the league. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Kentucky beat Northern Illinois last week. Will Levis still playing well. Kavasi Smoke is too. I know you guys talked a few minutes ago. This the humongous thing here is Chris Rodriguez is back uh, from suspension. Now, the question is, he is yet to play. Uh, I'm sure he's in shape, but my question is, is he in game shape? So there's a difference between the two there. Uh, that, that That's going to be fascinating. Ole Miss is still trying to figure out who their quarterback is, Jackson Dart or Luke Altmeyer, but they lead the SEC. Now, it's just amazing to think about this. They lead the SEC in rushing. Quinson Junkins and Zach Evans have done a really good job uh, in the game. Now, Ole Miss is the second team in the league in rush defense. That's something you would have never seen the last two years. But I give Lane credit, Shane. He has realized that They've got to run the ball better, and they've got to play better defense, and they've been able to do that. And this game, like Mississippi State and A&M, to me is virtually a toss-up, frankly, in deciding who will win this game. So the game is at Ole Miss, but I like Levis, and I like their linebackers. I know you've seen them up close. So to me, this is a fascinating game, to say the least. It really is. Uh, as you mentioned in Starkville, uh, the state dogs host A and M. Um, boy, A and M is just—I I, can't—I I just want them to lose every game for some reason. I think Mississippi State wins this game. How you see it playing out? Well, State beat A and M uh, last year uh, at A and M. Uh, so Will Rogers still doing the Will Rogers things. He leads the SEC fourteen hundred yards passing, sixteen touchdowns. Uh, so they're doing well. They're developing more receivers. Caleb Ducking and uh, Mackay Polk are, are playing well. Uh, a couple of things with A&M that, that, that we've got to point out. This is a tremendous blow for A&M. People may not have heard this. Anaya Smith, that we found out this week, is, is lost for the season. Mm-hmm. He was also a really good kick returner. So... That's a real blow for them. Devin A. Chain uh, is has um, really needs the ball more. That's going to be huge. Max Johnson, frankly, is okay. I really wonder if they lose this game or the Alabama game if they're going to go with Connor Weekman, who is the freshman, uh, with that too. Shane, let me give you a stat uh, that you and uh, uh, Mr. Brockmeyer were talking about the the offense for A and M. There are three teams that have only been to the red zone six times this year, <laughs> A&M, Colorado State, and Iowa. Wow. Shane, there, Shane, there are teams that have been to the red zone six times and a half. A&M's been to the red zone six times the whole year. That's an unbelievable stat. Um, Joseph has a question on Facebook Live brought to you by Mel Law. What about Dion's comments on coaching at Auburn? He threw even a jab at the Gators. I didn't see his comments. Do you have anything, any idea what they're referring to? 
There's a, I, and I don't, but I mean, there's a lot of speculation about Dion going to Georgia Tech or Dion going to uh, um, whatever job that's going to be open, uh, possibly Auburn. Uh, now, look, there, there's a trade off here. The best thing about Dion is, is Dion would recruit. He would get a lot of guys' attention. There's no doubt about that. But the reality of it is, could Dion get a SEC staff that knows the league, that recruits the league? That's something that Brian Harson did not do, and that has hurt him uh, immeasurably. So, uh, but, so Shane, to me, um, and, and again, uh, can he develop players in the in an SEC? Uh, you know, uh, you would. So, th- so that that's my question. I, I think he has a, a very fascinating future in college football, but there's just still a lot of stuff we don't know yet about Dion coaching on the next level. Yeah. All right. Two last things, Brent, before we get you out of here. Uh, two big games in the ACC. Uh, Wake travels to Tallahassee, and then the undefeated teams, NC State and Clemson. What do you think about those games? Uh, well, they're two very important games, uh, to say the least. DJ Ua Ungulale has actually played a bit better, um, uh, 371, five touchdowns uh, in, the, in the win over Wake Forest. That was a really good game. The big difference for Clemson's Will Shipley, the running back. Uh, now, Clemson's defense continues to play well. Um, I concur with what you said. I love Sam Hartman. Uh, frankly, what, with what he's done, and we'll talk about him in a minute. But NC State, Devin Leary is very good uh, at quarterback. Uh, so that's going to be a very interesting battle. Uh, I think game day is going to be there uh, also. Um, so, uh, But I think a lot of this is going to be – could come down to the better defense and the better line of scrimmage. Uh, big opportunity. I, I mean a big opportunity for FSU – having Wake Forest at home. Uh, Jordan Travis really played well in the Boston College game, 321 yards and a touchdown. Uh, their running backs were playing well. Florida State 4-0, first time since 2015. Uh, that, that has made a real difference, uh, too. And how, how quickly can Wake rebound from a game they probably should have won uh, with Clemson? So a lot... Certainly a lot on the table for uh, Florida State. I, they've got uh, Wake, NC State, and Clemson. Shane, I think this might be their best opportunity to, to win one of those three. If they could, they'd be one win away from a bowl game. Yes, for sure. Brent, great stuff as always. Y'all stay safe up there in the Jacksonville area, and we will talk to you next week, bud. Shane, as I go, let me say this real quick. Really excited on Monday night of this coming week. Um, my, believe it or not, my identical twin brother and I, and Brett does um, sports radio every day up in the Huntsville, Alabama area. But we are the guest speakers at the Macon Touchdown Club in Macon, Georgia. So that's going to be a unique experience for us to actually be – That they've never had – two guests at one time <laughs> well they are brett and i do a lot of radio up in that area and there are a lot of people up there that still think that we're we're just one person <laughs> <laughs> well they're going to be shocked two, they're they going to be shocked because y'all yeah. are identical it's crazy um so we'll, 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 we'll enjoy that well what we will and, and again as we go here certainly prayers and thoughts shane to our audience um, in Florida that um, uh, we can get through another day of this. And uh, once we reach, I think, tomorrow night or, or tomorrow afternoon, that things are going to get much better. No doubt. Brent, be safe. We'll talk to you next week, bud. Thank you, brother. Take care. That's Brent Beer joining us on the Titan MR hotline before we get out of here. <clears throat> Ruse Ogre State Farm Office is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to have life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. You give them a call at 352-240-1779. Hope everybody stays safe out there. Uh, as Brent said, thoughts and prayers go out to everybody down there in South Florida. Uh, it was devastating for sure. Tomorrow's program, 
We'll have uh, JC on. We'll do our Peachland Dental weekend picks. We'll also have Chris Harry join us to talk a little Gator football, but mostly Gator basketball. They've been practicing started on Tuesday. We'll get his thoughts and go from there. Have a great day, folks. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.